John here, Old Hickory Forge. Welcome back. If it's your first time here, welcome. So, what's going on today? I'm down here in the workshop getting moving on a new project. Something I've been wanting to make for a while is a traditional wrapped eye axe. A couple of videos back, I made the drift for doing it. But uh, it's something I've never done before, but I always kind of wanted to try. So, uh, this is my first time doing it. I'm kind of figuring it out as I go. Everything I've learned regarding procedures and measurements, I learned from watching John Switzer at Black Bear Forge. I'll leave a link to that video that I watched to kind of get my bearings in the description below. But what we got to get started is uh, this here is an old railroad tie plate. These are mild steel. We're going to use this for the body of the axe or part of it anyway, obviously not the whole thing. What we got here is a uh, spring clip. These go up under the tie plates and hold the track down or something like that. But these are equivalent to like a 1060, a 1070, like a good high-ish medium carbon spring steel. I've made daggers and blades out of these before and they work well. So that should... Uh, create a good serviceable axe edge but i'm not going to sit here and talk a year off let's get moving so if you watch the black bear forge video i put in the description his starting blank is inch and a half wide by half inch thick by nine inches long this here plate is about three quarters of an inch thick and it's only eight inches wide so i'm going to take that material right there it's about an inch and a half wide and just draw that out to half inch thick on the press and uh you know whatever we end up with will be our starting blank and we'll draw this down into about a quarter inch thick bar stock or so. I'll probably just draw out this whole clip just in case this screws up and I have to start over. But uh, that's, all that's, that's all that's going on now. I got that railroad spring clip drawn out. It's pretty cool how much material is actually there. This is about 5 sixteenths of an inch thick by about 2 inches wide by about 18 inches long. So, I mean, you can pull a sword out of that if you really wanted to. But we'll set that off to the side, let it cool, and when uh, the body of the axe is ready, I'll cut off the material I need for the bit. Alrighty. We got our tie plate steel drawn down to uh, inch and 3 quarters wide by half inch thick. Other than that, I'm following John Switzer's measurements pretty much identically. I found the center line, so 4 and a half inches from either end here. And I've marked off five-eighths of an inch either side for an inch and a quarter total. That's going to become the pole. On the other side, I've marked the center line, same deal, four and a half inches. And we have three and a half inches of total width in here, so it's an inch and three quarters on either side of the center line. We'll do set downs there and there, there and there. The material in between that will be spread out to make the cheeks, and then we'll forge the blade out of these bits here. Also, I've gone in here with a grinding disc and scored those marks just so that when I go to the anvil, I can feel it easier and it'll be uh, less chance of slopping up the set down. But uh, let's get moving. First set down, we're gonna do on the far mark, on the inside using the edge of the anvil. So second set down, we're gonna do on the opposite side, on the inside of where our pole marking is, so right about there. So with my first piece, I actually had a bit of a goof up that I wanted to show you guys so the same thing doesn't happen to you. The material for your pole needs to be pretty much left untouched. So when I say put the set down on the inside, right there is what I mean. You see here, I put it on this side of the mark and now it's all, you know, the, there ain't no fixing that, I threw this out. But uh, that's what it looks like when you do it wrong and that's what it looks like when you do it right. So you see what I mean about the pole material being uh, left pretty much intact? So next thing we'll do is we'll come in here and thin and spread these cheeks out, uh, get them shaped up how we like them and keep so, moving. Keeping the pole material off the anvil to keep from watered up. I'm just gonna go in here with a cross beam, get some more width. Like this end. Alrighty, we're moving right along. Got the cheeks spread. They're looking pretty good. I'm thinking what I want with the shape of the cheeks is them to be kind of flat on top and have a little bit of a cheek on the bottom, kind of like you'd see on a Grantsfors Brooks. So what I'm going to do is go to the end of the horn and strike from the top to kind of drive that material down, and uh, then we'll start shaping out the blade. Like I said, use the end of the horn. Press that up as we go. That ain't bad. So what's got to happen now is we need to start spreading out the material that's going to become the cutting edge to get more width. Just don't have too, too much of a plan with how I want it to look. I'm just 
kind of going with it. Alrighty, so that's one side about where I want it before uh, you know I wrap the whole deal around. It's looking pretty good, uh, so we'll just flip it around and uh, forge out this other side. You know, I'll do it really. It's gonna be a little bit of a pain to hold on to now. I was a bit worried about how I was gonna hold on to this thing because now this is tapered and it's not you know uniform thickness and everything. But this pair of bent knee tongs I made for uh, holding tomahawks by the eye works pretty well. I can grab it by the cheeks right there. So. Do it really just uh, moving right along. Alrighty, that's looking pretty good. The uh, the blades look to be pretty close in shape, they don't got to be dead perfect. So, now what we'll do is we'll wrap this thing around, get these shoulders to line up, and get set up for the first forge weld. Most important thing right now is getting those shoulders to line up how they need to. Don't worry about the shape of the eye or anything like that yet. We're looking pretty good, so uh, we'll go in for the first weld. We only really want to weld back near the eye right now so we can still get the bit in. But it's coming along. First weld, here we go. Staying back near the eye. Second weld, here we go. So now I'm just going to do a real quick kind of initial drifting of the eye to kind of see you know, what I'm working with. So I don't want to drift the eye all the way to shape right now because it's going to need to be dressed up again before the axe is finished anyway. And uh, the weld seems to be holding up pretty good. It's not as pretty as I would like, but it's there. So I'm going to let this thing cool. And then what I'll do is go to the grinder and clean up this front end of the profile a little bit before I put the bit in just to save time. But uh, right now we're about to get to work on the bit. So with our bit, all we gotta do is kind of taper down the end that we want to seed into the body of the X. It's kind of like if you were hammered in a knife bill. Alrighty, so I started grinding on the axe a little bit just to get some of the seams off and uh, check out how the weld took. It's looking good. It does look like our shoulder kind of shifted down on the bottom right here. So I'm gonna go in there with a die grinder and clean that up a little bit before we keep going. But uh, it's starting to look like something. So we got our spring clip steel marked up. We're gonna cut it off. Clean it up on the grinder a little bit just to get some of the scale off and then go in and cut some notches in here and then what we'll do is we'll get the body of the axe hot while this is cold we'll basically beat it in there close it all up flux it and forge weld it all solid and uh you know have a good cutting edge all righty got this thing in the vise with the drift in you really don't need to put the drift in it just makes it a little easier We got our bit welded in. I didn't really worry about making it perfect because my plan is to go and trim off all the excess and get like a rough kind of preform and then go back to the anvil and forge it out to its final dimensions and everything. But uh, other than that, we're looking real good. So all 
what's happening now is forging the axle section. I'm going to keep it at or pretty close to a welding heat just to avoid putting the undue stress on the forge welds. I'm going to spread the cutting edge out where I want it and then start working my way back, dress up the profile, this, that, and the other. I'll do it really. Alrighty. I'm liking the shape of the axe pretty good, so now we'll just take it back to the swage block, drift the eye to its final shape, and we'll be good to hit the grinder. So here we are after dressing up the profile a little bit, cleaning up the surface of the axe. It'll have a nice black forge finish when we're done after all the thermal cycling. All the forge welds took real, real nice, you know. For my first ever wrapped eye axe, I'm really happy with that. So uh, we'll go ahead and touch mark and heat treat this baby. Touch mark right about there. Should do it. Nice. So I finally shelled out the money for uh, proper quenching oil. So this year's Parks 50 we're going into. And then we're going to draw a temper, bring the edge back to about a dark brown or so. And then we'll check the rock wall hardness, see where we're at, see if we need to do any more tempering. Alrighty, here we are for the quench. So we're just watching the colors run. You see that blue creeping forward. Looking for about a dark brown on the edge or so. Alrighty, here we are after the draw tempering. It's looking pretty good. We got a nice dark brown on the edge. I rubbed the whole deal down with some boiled linseed oil as it was cooling to give us a nice black oxide finish. So we'll go in and start grinding in the cutting edge, check our rock wall hardness to see if we need to do any more tempering. Getting to work grinding in the cutting edge, uh, I checked it with the rock wall files. The 60 file bites really easily and the 55 skates just a little bit, you know, doesn't really bite it very much. So we probably got a rock wall around like 56, 57, which is a tiny bit on the high side for an axe, but it's not unheard of. A lot of really big camp knives are tempered to 56, 58. So I'm going to leave it right there. We'll go ahead and take this cutting edge up the grits, get it sharp and uh, keep moving on this baby. It's looking good though. So here we are after getting this thing sharpened up. Well, didn't blend as well as I would have liked there, but I can't catch it with my fingernail, which tells me that's just a surface inclusion. It doesn't go all the way through, so it's not structural. You know, the axe is fine. If you ever look at historical examples of tools and weaponry, a lot of those forge welds are ugly as sin, and they hold up fine. So I'm not worried about it at all. But uh, other than that, we can right, keep moving. So what we got here, nice straight grain piece of ash should make a good handle. Don't have too, too much of a plan. I've just sketched out some rough lines to follow. And, uh... We'll take this guy to the grinder and see what happens. We got the handle roughed out. It's looking pretty good. Now it's just a game of getting the head to fit up correctly. So, you know, we've test fitted it. You see, need to remove some more there, there, and around here on the back. Get it buttoned up against the shoulder real nice. And uh, then we'll sand it up, smooth it up, make it look pretty and be good to go. Get a slot for our wedge started. Actually using a piece of ebony for the wedge, I just think it'll look cool. Decided I wanted to make a uh, copper step wedge for the axe. I think that'll look cool. While I'm doing that, I'm just soaking the whole deal in this bucket of boiled linseed oil. Should get in there and swell the wood really nice. And, uh, I think it's going to look pretty cool. So there we go, one wrapped eye axe made from railroad scrap. For my first ever wrapped eye, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. The uh, cutting edge is three and a half inches. It weighs a little over a pound and a half. 
Handle's about 17 inches long, so it's a good size, good weight for, you know, like a lightweight pack or camp axe or something like that. The handle's actually really comfortable. I've never made an axe handle from scratch before, so I'm really, really happy with how that came out. Now, it's far from perfect. Like I showed you before, there's a few imperfections in the forge weld on one side. The head fit up isn't completely perfect because I bit in a little deep with the die grinder when I was cleaning this up right there, but it is solid. Got our uh, ebony wedge and our copper step wedge. Kind of cool, but... So like I said, it's not perfect. There's always room for improvement. But for my first ever axe of this style, I'm really, really happy with it. So there's that. So like I said in the video, this axe is for March's quarterly Patreon giveaway. I'll probably just end up live streaming, uh, picking the winner, because that way I don't have to edit or upload anything. It's just easier. So there's that. You know, if you're stateside, I'll cover shipping. If you're overseas, we'll talk. So uh, patrons of the channel, be on the lookout for that. And again, big thanks to you guys. You guys are really the muscle that keeps the channel moving. I couldn't be more thankful for you. Uh, but that's all I got for you. If you like what you saw, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Always more cool stuff coming. Links down below to the uh, the Etsy if you want to purchase any of my work. Patreon if you want to become a patron. As well as my other social media if you want to follow me. If you want to stay up to date with uh, the day-to-day -day goings on here at the shop, Instagram is the best place. But uh, like I said, that's all I got for you. And uh, y'all take care.